Please pray with me. Gracious God, thank you for finding us and sending your son almost to chase us, but to knock at our door. Help us to respond with a welcome. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I like to be in on every joke. I do not like to be out of the loop. When you post something funny on Facebook, I don't like to have to ask Aaron what it means. I mean, don't you see yourself as sharp and and witty and in the know about issues? Don't you hate to be surprised and caught off guard? It's true in the little things in life, and it's true in the bigger things of life, the major things. Don't we want to make good decisions about our friends, spouses, employers? When we make a purchase, I want to get the good deal, not the bad deal. And we want to be in control. In contrast to that, there's this little plaque above the closet door in what used to be my daughter's room. However, when she comes to visit, it is her room still. But above her closet door, the little plaque says, Dare to be naive. It's like it's a message to be pushed away. Naive is not good. Don't be taken in. Don't trust too easily. Don't give too quickly. Measure everything carefully. Don't forgive willy-nilly. People should earn my generosity. And when I say too many of those sentences, either out loud or silently, it gives me pause. See, that little plaque goes deeper than one might expect, especially for a Christian. Today's gospel lesson is the last teaching Jesus gives in the gospel of Matthew before he goes to the cross. That alone should give us pause. It's his final lesson before he finishes the earthly part of his ministry. And so you know it's important. And he teaches the disciples and us about the last day, judgment day, the day when everything will be put into balance. And many believe it happens right when Christ returns as Lord, as King, Judge, Son of God. He will separate the sheep from the goats, the people of God from those who are not. And it is a surprising vision, teaching, parable on so many levels. I've already made it clear, I like to be in the know. I don't want to be thrown off guard. I'd like to control it. Thank you very much. So here we have this picture of final judgment, and we're not seeing Jesus judge based on what a person believes. It's like Jesus wants to jumble up our equilibrium. The church has argued about this vision, this parable, for centuries, because that's what the church does. It's what we do. Is this a picture of judgment for everyone or just non Christians, as some interpreters believe? There are arguments for both. And are the least of these Christian missionaries or anyone who is in need? Again, arguments for both. I like the experts who say it doesn't matter. Because Christians are not held to a lesser standard than anyone else. It's true. Well, there is this theme in this vision of Jesus that we tend to miss in the midst of such important teachings. Neither the sheep nor the goats knew that the people they were helping or not helping were Jesus. They didn't know If we do look at it closely, we look at the goats, they don't see that it's Jesus that they refused to take care of. And that word translated take care of is the word that we get the word deacon from. 
we are to be deacons. So the goats didn't know there was Jesus. But us good people, we can tell it's Jesus. That's why we help others, because the needy just might be Jesus. The sheep didn't know it was Jesus either. They didn't take care of the hungry, thirsty, lonely, naked, and sick or in prison because they thought they were serving Jesus. I don't know if they knew why they were doing it. I told you, I like to be in on things. I want to know why I do what I do. I want to know why you do do what you do. We do know that they were moved by the needs of others. Their hearts were in a different place than the goat people. I guess they really got the love your neighbor as yourself part. It wasn't calculated. It wasn't for spiritual profit. It wasn't to exercise their spiritual gifts. It's more like their behavior was just a part of who they are. I want you to take this with you today. Here's the list again. Hungry, thirsty, lonely, naked, sick, in prison. For some reason... Folks with those needs move God's heart. God thinks that they are very important. When folks have these needs, God's cosmos is out of balance. The cosmos is out of balance. God thinks that it's very important that we have the same feelings that God does and do our best to act upon them. So, do you think God is naive? Don't you sometimes think that God should know better? Doesn't God know that some of those people get into the trouble they're in because of their own fault? Doesn't God know that they have done the same things over and over again? You know what I wish? I wish I only had to apologize to my wife once. And then I got it. And I didn't mess up again. But I've had to apologize to my wife more than once. And friends and you, and others. Because I blow it more than once. Huh. Doesn't God know that they don't deserve that kind of grace? Yes. God does. What's worse is God knows that they are us. We don't deserve God's grace. We do some of the same things over and over again. We let our fears determine our actions when we sometimes should be letting our hearts, if our our hearts are, to use an old word, unfettered, unchained, We let our pain freeze us to make sure that we are never naive again. There's a reason that the Bible talks about God replacing our hearts of stone with hearts of flesh. For God wants to heal us and heal our hearts. Maybe the goat people couldn't help it because they were frozen could be that they were really afraid and let that determine their lives. One of the oldest prescriptions for someone who is depressed is to tell him or her to go out and do something good for somebody else. You've probably heard that before. It's not a magic cure. 
Sometimes it's the absolute wrong thing to say. But I do think at the heart of it, it points in the general direction of Jesus. Maybe it points to the heart of God. When we do get out and do something good for somebody in need, sooner or later we do help those who don't deserve it. But it changes us. Dare to be naive. Dare to be naive. A guy with a funny first name made that quote. His first name was Buckminster. Buckminster. I think they called him Bucky. Buckminster Fuller penned that quote. He was talking about the moral of work. He was saying that if we learn something specific, it would lead to more learning. Dare to be naive. God is saying that if we love, it gets bigger. It will lead to loving more. It will lead us to the inheritance of the kingdom of God, in which that's what it's really all about. Dare to be like Jesus. Amen.